believers, we are waiting for His coming. Amen? Each one of us are waiting for the coming of Jesus to come back again. And then last we heard that He came as the Lamp of God. And now He's going to come as the Lion. Amen? He's no longer the Lamb. He's no longer coming to pay a price again. He's no longer coming as a baby. He's coming as the King. Amen? He's coming as the Judge. He's coming to make things right. Amen? And this time... Amen. It's not with grace, but it's with, it is with judgment. Amen. And be prepared for that. And thank God for the season of grace that God has given us as we are in the presence of God. Let's continue to focus on the Lord. So last week we spoke on from that uh, portion of Romans. We started with Romans 14, 17. That's where we started from some time back. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the, that's the prom, that is the call of God. A kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking. Limited, don't limit this Christmas season into all the decorations and the shopping and the gifts and all the other extra things. I mean, don't let the Santa steal your Christmas away. I mean, Christmas is bigger than all that. It's Jesus. I mean, that's what Jesus said, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's how we set a difference between us and the world and show the world amen there is more to life on this earth amen not just shopping and gifts and the beauty of christmas it is greater which stays in our heart amen and jesus saying quoting the same words in luke chapter 12 he said do not seek what you should eat or you should drink nor have an anxious mind for all these things the nations of the world seek after your father knows you need these things but Seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. The same words Jesus has said and Paul has paraphrased it into a little more concise form. Jesus goes further. He says, do not fear little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. It is the father's good pleasure. And then he said, sell what you have and give alms. Provide for yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches or moths destroy. Amen. We we said about this where last time we said, Amen, when you are giving it to the Lord, Amen, do not let anything hold your heart back. Amen. If anything is holding your heart back, Amen, sell it away. Amen. Take it away. Because if that keeps you away from God, you, you just sell it away. Don't, do not let that take your heart away. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Amen. Look to that your heart is not taken away by the things of this world. Eating or drinking or the shopping and the gifting. Not just limited to that, but then over and above it all. Amen. There is a righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost which we pursue every day. And after saying this, this is what where we finished last time. We said about where it is so important that our hearts are submitted to the Lord, that our hearts are with the Lord. And we spoke about how Mary, as she was getting ready to marry, that was her highest joy. Here comes the treasure. Here comes the news that you're going to be carrying the Son of God. And she says, God, if that's your will, here am I. Amen. It, she's putting all her life at risk, her marriage at risk, everything at risk. But she's ready to go through that. She submitted herself to the Lord. And she got ready because she received a word from the Lord and a sign. And that's where she submitted herself. That's where we stopped. And the verses further from there, verses 35 on, verse Jesus says, Let your waist be girded. Come on, everybody say, let your waist be girded. And your lamps burning. Amen. Jesus is saying after that, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourself be like men who wait for the masters when he will return from the wedding. That he, when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. See, just before that God, Jesus, Jesus was saying about your heart. He said, like, let not your hearts be in the wrong place. Let your hearts be in the right place. Now he is talking about your waist. Amen. He says like let your waist be girded. What it shows? It shows like you're getting ready. Okay. You're getting ready or you're prepared. 
And the second is like, let your lamps be burning, that you're always ready. Okay, your lamps are burning. You're prepared and you're ready. You're prepared and you're ready. For what? For, for, for like he says, be like men who wait for the master when he returns from the wedding, that he comes and knocks and they may open to him immediately. And then he says, blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Amen. When he comes, when the master comes and he finds us them watching, blessed are those. Assuredly, I say unto them, he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. Amen. Then he says, I say to you, he will gird himself and serve them. Amen. And then he says, and if he should come in the second watch, that means he didn't come in the first watch. It just happens. If it happens, he didn't come in the first watch. And if he comes in the second watch or in the third watch, amen. You know, when I was small, I used to be at home and we used to have this Christian magazines coming home and all these magazines had one line on top, Jesus is coming soon. So I used to read this one year, second year, third year, and I'm like, yeah, every year I'm reading the same thing. When is this Jesus coming? And as I grew up, like, you know, then the magazines stopped coming. They stopped writing, Jesus is coming soon. Maybe they also got, it's like too much. We just need to slow down. Amen. We may have expected him in the first watch. He may not have come. In the second watch, he may not have come. Some, of, some people get tired. Some people, like, you know, losing their guts. Some people stop burning their lamps. Some people get distracted. But Jesus says, if he comes in the second watch, or in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants amen who don't get tired of waiting amen who don't loosen their good and sit down or relax from what they're called to do amen and but they are the same ones who are doing exactly what the Lord wants them to do amen amen righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beyond. Amen. Remember church. God is not asking you to leave your eating and drinking. And leave everything and go away. No. He has placed you in this place. And that is a blessing. Praise God for that. But he's calling you to a purpose for which you are being created. Amen. Pursuit of that purpose. Pursuit of what God has called me for. Remember that. And that's what he's asking. If you are still in the third watch, you're not tired, but you're in the, even in the third watch, okay, I didn't see, I prayed, I didn't find, but I'm still going to wait. Amen. Blessed are those servants. Then he says, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. Can we just thank the Lord, Father God? We want to say thank you. Lord, even as you are calling us, oh Father God, to a higher purpose in this season of Christmas, oh Lord, as we are celebrating and rejoicing, let us not forget, Lord, what you have called us for. Help us to be ready all the time because the Son of Man is coming at an hour that we don't expect. And I pray, Lord, that none of us will be caught off guard when you come. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I mean, just imagine if Jesus was coming now at this hour. Amen. Some of us are watching football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> okay, okay. That's my topic today. When he comes, amen, and Advent. When he comes, amen, and, and this many people are in the church, amen. The church is supposed to be full, but then this many people, okay. When he comes, what will happen? You will never know that you will never expect it when he comes that's what jesus said he will he make he can come like a thief amen the thief can come at, the thief does not come with prior notice amen he just comes the day when he feels like 
or maybe he plans it out, but very well, that he doesn't get caught. And Jesus said, that's how he's going to come. He's gone. He may not come in the first hour. I mean, everybody, when you started your faith, you came to believe you started your faith very well. You're like praying every day, reading the word. And after you prayed and then the second watch of your season of your faith. Amen. Okay, you can still continue at the third watch. Now I can less let my guard down. You know, I'm anyway getting get old. I saw these messages. I heard these messages. Jesus is coming soon. I didn't see it yet. Amen. Maybe I can just a little bit slower down my standards. And you remember church? Church has been doing that all this while. Amen. The churches have been doing that all that while. They have been lowering their standards. Amen. They started off with faith. They started off with strong. I mean, revivals came, revived them. And then slowly the standard goes down. And then God sends a revival, picks them up again. And then they will go down. And then, amen, God does it again. Amen, church, we need to keep praying for the revival. Amen. Keep praying for a revival. Lord, pick us back again. Bring us back again. Remember, and the first watch you prayed for a revival. And the revival didn't turn out. Amen. That doesn't mean that you stop your prayers to go for the second watch. Amen. That's what Jesus said. Blessed is those servants whom Jesus finds that they are doing what they call for. Go for the third watch. When you don't see it in the second watch, go for the third watch again. Amen. Because he will come. Amen. Let's go into Luke chapter 2, the, the Christmas story. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Now in those days... A decree went out from Caesar Augustus. A census had to be taken of all the inhabited world. This man had a wild idea at a time and he started doing this. And this was the first census taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census. What a messy period. Just imagine people are going, walking all around the place. Everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth. Just, just listen to that point. He's coming from Galilee, the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I mean, this is the Christmas story. We, it's very beautifully described by Luke, most probably narrated by Mary and wrote it down very beautifully. That's why we have a little more description in detail from Mary's perspective, which was not in Matthew and Mark, which was written before this. And then, if you look at that, they came to Bethlehem. Amen? Amen. So the census that happened was not by mistake. Amen? Amen. People can say, hey, why would Quirinus give a um, census at this time and Mary could have thought God I'm almost about pregnant I'm carrying your promise and this is where this is supposed to be the time for that this man should be sending in uh, you are the king of kings you are the Lord you should have you should have known this God says yes I know this and I'm doing it at the right time because the promise of the son of man born is not in Nazareth but it is in Bethlehem Amen. For which Mary has to deliver the baby in Bethlehem to fulfill the promise. Amen. The promise was given to Bethlehem. And then in Micah chapter 5, we read this verse, 5 verse 2. It says, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Amen. So the promise was given that to Bethlehem will be the one who will be hosting Jesus, the birth of Jesus. Amen. And for that, 
God will make all things. He will turn the world upside down to make his promise come true. Amen. Amen. Mary cannot give birth to Jesus in Nazareth. She has to give birth to Jesus in Bethlehem because it is promised. Amen. Church, if he has promised, he will do it the way he has promised. Amen. Hold on to it. Let's go further. And then, I mean, did, did, uh, did the Israelites knew about this promise? Definitely yes. If you read Matthew chapter uh, 2, verses 4 to 6, this is the place where the three kings, you know the story of the three kings who came, who came, to, came to Herod and said, where is the king of Jews born? And the king, the, he's, he called all the teachers and said, hey, get me the information. Where is the Christ supposed to be born? And, they, and then it says, when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, not the least among the, among the rulers of the Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So this promise which was given to Bethlehem was known to Israel. Amen. Was known to Israel. Israelites knew it. The teachers knew it. The Pharisees knew it. Everybody in Israel knew this promise of Messiah coming to Bethlehem. Being born in Bethlehem. This was a known promise in the land of Judah. Now let me ask you a question. If you know that there is a king that is going to be born in your city, amen, if you are given an information or, a, or, a, or the president is coming to your house or the president is coming to your community, what are you going to do? Amen. What are you going to do? Of course, you're going to prepare your situations. You're going to prepare your circumstances. And then it'll be, it'll be set up, it'll be decked up, it'll be given presidential style, uh, honor according to the person who is coming. Amen. If he's a president, an honor which is according to him. If he's a king, if he's an honor which is according to him. If he's an ordinary man, the honor. And everybody will be giving the same honor that is due to him. I'm sure by this time, Bethlehem Ham has become a great city then by then all the pharisees have made their way to bethlehem started living in bethlehem started dwelling in bethlehem because you know why the king is going to be born in bethlehem amen amen i'm sure the most richest people must have moved in there and that's why people like mary and joseph who are poor had to move out amen you know, sometimes it happens, right? When the city, city goes up, the, the standard goes up, some people may not be able to afford it. And we know Mary and Joseph are poor. Maybe they move, they were, they are from Bethlehem, but they had to move out because maybe they are poor. We don't know. It doesn't say. I'm just thinking. It's in my wild ima imagination. But remember, Bethlehem is now completely filled with people, religious people, praying people, waiting for the Savior to be born. And you know what? I'm thinking like, you know, people are thinking, okay, God, they're looking around. Is there any pregnant woman in my, in my neighborhood? Is there any, anyone who is going to bring forth that baby? And they're all waiting for it. But you know what? Even though the promise was given to Bethlehem, Bethlehem isn't ready yet. Why? Because it was supposed to be born in Bethlehem, but Mary and Joseph was not in Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph was in Nazareth. Amen? Mary and Joseph were in Nazareth. It was noticed by the Lord in Nazareth. So it is something that it was, I was thinking about it. God, why? You didn't find anyone else in Bethlehem? Was it that God could not Find a specific couple who, who could do the same thing in Bethlehem. Amen. Church, I want to tell you something. God never makes a mistake. Amen. He never makes a mistake. Amen. And like, you know, Nazareth, the town of Nazareth is considered good for nothing. We know that from Nathaniel. When, 
when they said, like, he's a Nazarene, he said, that town is horrible. And God is choosing Mary and Joseph in Nazareth, a town which is good for nothing, live, looking over the town of Bethlehem. Church, I want to remind you, God will fulfill his promise, but you got to be ready for it. Amen? We got to be ready for it. If we are not ready for his promise, I mean, he has to look over and fulfill that promise somewhere else. And that's what he did here. We see Mary and Joseph, they are from Bethlehem, but they went over and started living in Nazareth, a town which is good for nothing. But if you, if you, if you, if I just want to take this a little more deeper, if you look about this in Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 30, God tells Ezekiel, he says, I look for someone among who could build walls or stand in front of me by the gaps of the world walls to defend the land and keep it from destroying, but I could not find anyone. It says the Lord was looking for someone who could do that. He was looking for people. It was not that there was no people. There were people, but he was looking for the particular someone. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verses, verses 9, it says, The Lord's eyes scan the whole world to find those hearts who are committed to him. Amen. His, his eyes are scanning the earth to see whose heart is committed to him. We know in the scripture when, when Samuel came to anoint Jesse's son, God said, go to Jesse's son. The king of Israel is in his house. He goes there. He finds the first son. He says, okay, this guy. And God says, no. Second guy, no. Third guy, no. Fourth guy, no. Fifth guy, sixth guy. And G Samuel was like, God, did you just forgot uh, what happened? And God said, no, I'm not looking what you're looking at. Amen. I'm not looking for what you're looking at. So Samuel asked Jesse one more question. Jesse, do you have any more sons? I mean, <laughs> I mean that question would be very funny today. But then Jesse says, yeah, one more. He is there. He said, bring him. I will not sit down till he comes. Amen. When God honors, he never makes a mistake. Amen. The thing is that God was looking in Bethlehem, but he could not find the right person. He was scanning his eyes in Bethlehem, but he could not find the right person who was girded and whose lamp was burning, who was prepared to receive the promise of God. But he looked around in Nazareth, a town which is the other side of other side of Bethlehem, not qualified to be his promise, amen? Not qualified to be the best town, not qualified as the good one, but he saw in that bad town, two people's girds, where waist was girded, and their lambs were still burning, ready to wait for the Messiah, amen? And God said, okay, if they are ready, that's where we are going to do the miracle, that's where we're going to pour the promise. Who is ready? The one who is ready. The one whose lamps are still burning. Whose, whose house has still got prayers. I want to ask you, church, today. We are praying for the second coming of Jesus. We are praying for a revival in this town. How many of you diligently pray every day? God, we want to see, Lord, your miracle happening in the city. We want to see a revival. Or after we have eaten our foods, we like, okay, God, I know the, all around the world people are praying. And we feel the comfort of the home. Feel the warmth inside the home. And we take our prayers for lightly. We have kept our lamps aside. We have loosened our waist. And we are like, Lord, it's time to take a little bit of rest in the worldly eating and drinking. And that's where the reminder comes. Do not think about the eating and drinking because that's what the nations go after. But you are called for a higher purpose. And then you are called to wait upon the Lord because you are called to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. Amen. Because the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's beyond that is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's not just a physical from the outside, but it's a spiritual from the inside. And the spiritual thing is what is going to shine, church. Amen. 
Amen. See, the church, our skin, our body will fade away one day. One day we will, we will become more bent. One day we will not be able to carry ourselves with our two legs. But the light that we will shine through our life will remain on this earth. Amen. It will change the people around you. It will change the circumstances around you. You got to believe and trust in the Lord. The Lord has a plan for you and me. Amen. Do not let the promise of God go over you. Amen. You may, be in, you may not be in Bethlehem. You may be in Nazareth. Amen. But the Lord is looking for the ones who is, whose waist is girded. The Lord is looking for those hearts whose hearts are ready. The Lord is looking for those lamps, those lamps which are still burning and his eyes are scanning. And remember, church, he will not make a mistake. He will not anoint the wrong person. He will definitely anoint David, even if he is in the jungle. Amen. Mary and Joseph are not in Bethlehem, but they are in Nazareth. That means God does will not make a mistake. He will still send the promise to the right place. Amen. You may not be in your right situation. You may not have the right circumstances, but if you if you have your lamps burning. Amen. Amen. You may not be, you may not have all the things that is fit and qualified for whatever the world is asking for. But if your waist is ready, your waist is girded. Amen. Amen. You may not have the right words to say, but if your heart is ready, I tell you, church, the promise of God is coming. Amen. Bethlehem, it was yours, but you just missed it. And it went over to Nazareth. To where? Joseph and Mary was a poor couple, but a couple was waiting on the Lord. We know about Joseph. The Lord scanned and he found Mary. And the Lord scanned and he found Joseph. And then we heard about Mary last time. Like she was waiting for a wedding and God is coming and saying, Are you going to carry a baby before your marriage? And that's like, God, you're going to destroy my family or my marriage and all those things. But Jesus, no, God, if this is your will, take it. And I can, I can prove it to you that Joseph was more righteous than any of us. Amen. Amen. Which of you would marry a woman? You know, your fiance, if she got pregnant before your marriage. And you know, you don't know what happened. Which of your fathers and mothers would let your sons marry a woman who is already pregnant with some baby? Can I see any hand? No. I can say Joseph was more righteous than all of us. Amen? You know what he did? The scripture says in, in Matthew chapter 119, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. Amen? Now, this is not a modern age that we are living in. This is a time where this was all considered like huge. And then a woman who is caught in adultery is stoned to death publicly. And this is the time where Joseph, he, he is a righteous man. He knows that Mary is a good girl. He knows Mary is a, not a woman who, 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 who such things can happen. But she don't, he don't want to disgrace her. And says, God, I'm going to do it very silently, very secretly. And God says, that's the heart that I wanted. Amen. Amen. A man who is ready to not insult and disgrace the one who thinks that has to. Amen. But he has a lot of grace in his heart for a fiance who thinks that has wronged her. Amen. Wronged him. Amen. He can say, okay, she, she did something which, which was very wrong to me. But he had the grace inside his heart to accept her and say, okay, God, I'm not going to make this bad as it looks. And then that's the man, God said, his heart is ready. Praise the Lord. I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready for this guy. Mary submitted her heart. Joseph, a righteous man. And God said, I found the people that I need to use. And I have already found them. He scanned through the earth. He scanned through Bethlehem, and he didn't find anyone. He scanned through Nazareth. He find the right people, and he blessed them. Bethlehem, you know, and what does Bethlehem happen? When Mary and Joseph, we read the story, when Mary and Joseph ended up in Bethlehem, 
It happened, her time came to give birth. Amen? A time came to give birth. Just imagine if a woman is about to give birth, what would you do? What would you do? Give her space. Give her a bed. At least a bed. Amen? Amen. If, if, if you say, okay, my, my guest has come, everyone is, okay, you would end up giving your own bed. At least because, at least because that's, not, that's not something that is going to happen for, forever. That's just one night or two night thing. Amen. And here is Mary going to Bethlehem and they said her, the inn is full, sorry. Bethlehem, the town that is supposed to receive the Son of God has no mercy in his own eyes for a woman who is pregnant and caring. Amen, church, sometimes we wonder what happened. Amen, church, that's what Jesus said. Be girded. Amen. Be ready. Keep your lamps burning. Because, you know, we don't know how his coming will be. We don't know when his moment will be. We don't know. I mean, he will be asking us to show up anytime. Church, it is so easy to sing praises to God here. It is so easy to clap our hands here. It is so easy to do that. But when we go outside, Amen. The moment when we are asked to forgive. The moment when we are asked to step up our righteousness. Amen. Will we be able to show? Amen. Amen. That is the call that God is calling us. Be ready all the time. Will at your waist be girded all the time. Amen. Not just when you're reading the word. Not just when you're praising the Lord. Not just that you came to church. Don't feel good about it. But be girded all the time. Know that I'm a child of God everywhere. Amen. Amen. Not just in the church. But in your school. In your college. In your workplace. In the roads. In your community. Amen. Bethlehem, here is the Savior that is coming into your town. She is on a donkey and you have no place for her saying the inn is full. Amen. And you gave her the stable. Praise the Lord. Church, how they missed it again the second time. They missed it the first time. They missed it again. And you know what? Bethlehem is full of people waiting for the Savior. Amen. Savior, waiting for the Savior. The teachers, the, the experts, everyone has studied the word. They know the Savior is coming. He will be born. And they're waiting for him in Bethlehem. And here is he coming on a donkey in the mother's womb. And they missed him there. And he gave him the honor of being outside the home. Bethlehem's honor for Jesus was the outside. Outside in the stable. That's all yours. No one is going to disturb you there. Amen. I mean, God just had to fulfill the promise. He fulfilled the promise. Not just that. And heaven honored the ones who were outside too. Church, the honor that you give to God, you will receive it. Amen. The honor that you give to God, you will receive it. They gave Jesus the outside. They didn't give him a home. They gave him the outside. And heaven took it. Amen. Evan said, okay, if that's the place that you want to give, we'll take it. And very beautifully, Mary gave the birth to her firstborn, wrapped him in these clothes, and lay him. And maybe Joseph must have looked around, where shall we lay him? It's time. And he pulled the manger. You know, when I used to see this manger in this uh, crib, and I thought that was like uh, the baby crib. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. And I only got to know the real meaning of manger after growing up because I always thought manger was where babies were laid. And no, manger is where the hay is laid for the animals to eat. Amen. Manger is the hay where you put the food for the animals to eat and push it in front of the animals. And Joseph pulled it out from there amen, and let the baby sleep on it. And that's what Bethlehem had to offer the Son of God a manger where he could lie down. Amen. Church, wherever he laid down was blessed. Amen. Whatever he touched was blessed. Amen. Amen. He was on the cross. Amen. A cross that which was cursed, we considered so blessed. Amen. The manger. Amen. It became so popular now. 
every time we think about the manger. And remember, not just that, I mean, Bethlehem's honor. In the same town, it says in Luke, the look for the ghost to write. Now there in the same country, shepherds were living outside in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of God shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Amen. Not lying in a crib, not lying in a home but lying in a manger. He said, okay, this is what Bethlehem gave, and you're going to see this as a sign. Amen? And because this is an unusual sign, because no baby is supposed to lie in a manger. Amen? And then suddenly there was an angel and a multitude of heavenly hosts praising the Lord, saying, I mean, the first carol ever, glory to God in the highest. Can we say it together? Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I mean, the first carol that was sung on earth ever. Amen. When Jesus was born and the first carol was sung by the angel, not to the experts, not to the Pharisees, not to the people who are waiting for a Messiah, but to the shepherds who are sleeping outside waiting on their flocks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, church, this is what happens when we honor God. Amen, if you, if, just imagine that if they would have taken Jesus into their home. Amen. It was not those animals and people who would have witnessed Jesus. It would have been a house that would have seen Jesus. They would have recognized it. They would have called the neighborhood. They would have called the other neighbor because this is something amazing. And they would have, have an amazing picture of Angels singing for them there. There would have been a great celebration there. There would have been a great, amazing celebration. The Savior is born. That was what's supposed to happen. But over here, I mean, they kept Jesus outside their homes. And God said, we will do it again. He goes, calls the shepherds. Amen. People from outside. Amen. Church, that's what happened. Amen. He, 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 sent, he was born to his own people. His own did not re receive him. But to those who believed in him. He gave them the children, to be, the right to become the children of God. Amen. Church, it is, it is, that's what God is calling us, to be ready with your waist girded and your lamps burning. Amen. Because he can show up anytime. The, 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 the call to you can come anytime. Amen. The call to you can come anytime. You may be thinking, okay, God, this is what I want to do for you. This is what I want to plan for you. This is what I want to do for you. And maybe God comes out of the plan. Hmm? Lord, I didn't plan this. Okay, no. Are you ready? The call is, are you ready? Jesus will come anytime. Amen? He will come anytime. His promise is sure. There's no change to his promise. His promise is for sure. As he promised, it will happen. In his time, he will make all things beautiful. Amen. He will make all things beautiful. He said, I am coming. He will come. Amen. Amen. He will come. He said, that's what the Son of God will come at a time that you do not expect. That's why he said, be ready all the time. Set your hearts ready all the time. You put, you get, your, get your waist girded. And get your lamps burning that's what he said in the last therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour that you do not expect Bethlehem waited patiently they were still waiting Jesus was born they didn't even know about it Jesus was born and Jesus went back from there but they didn't even know about it they were waiting for it but they were not prepared for it Amen. They were, they were waiting for it, but they were not prepared for it. When Jesus, when the eyes of the Lord were scanning over it, he didn't find the right people. Amen. 
Amen. They didn't find the right people there. There were religious, religious experts there. There were teachers there. There were pray, prayerful people, like, you know, who called upon God, all those stuff, but they were not ready for God. They were not even ready to let a pregnant lady into their home, saying the inn was full. Amen. God will fulfill his promise anyway. Amen. Even if we do it or not, even if we pray or not, even if you even if we sit on our feet and ask the Lord or not, he will do it anyway. But church, those who are ready, they will see it. Amen. Those who are ready, they will see it. Those shepherds that night, they were watching over their flocks. They were not sleeping. They were watching over their flocks. Amen. And God said, okay, if they are awake, I'm going to do that with them. Amen. Church, he will do it with anyone who is ready. Anyone who is ready. Can you be ready at this season? I mean, the challenge is, church, for us, because we may think, okay, God will come up this way. God will come up that way. I can do this for God, that for God. Now, God will call you out of the blue. I mean, it, the, your call to serve God may not come inside the church. It may be outside in the workplace. Maybe when you are facing someone, when you're driving on the road, maybe that's when your call will come to serve the Lord. And the challenge is to stay girded. And the challenge is to stay burning your lamb. So that when you are burning your lamb, that's when you're lighting. People are seeing that lamp. Amen? People are seeing that lamp that you have. And Jesus is saying, hey, people are seeing that lamp. Keep it burning. Keep it burning. Because when I come, let your ways be girded and your lambs be burning. Amen? And as he said, as the prophets, as the prophets prophesied the first time, and Jesus said it this time. He is coming again and he's coming for sure. And he's asking only one thing. Can you be, you, can your waist be girded and your lamps be burning? You may have crossed the first watch. You may have crossed the second watch. And you may have crossed the third watch. But blessed are you if you are still waiting. Amen. Amen, church. This is the message for today. Can we just surrender ourselves to the Lord today? Can we just 